It's Grady at Adventures in Barbecue. We're here for the 4th of July family barbecue, inviting you to join us. Mm -hmm. What I've done so far is we've got chicken thighs over here and we've got a, a rack of ribs. What I've done so far is just kind of cut the excess fat and skin off if, the, if it's too much and cleaned them good and now I've coated them in olive oil. So they're just sitting now waiting for us to make up a rub to put on them. Okay. And I've got a, a couple of bowls here. So what I usually do is um, start with something that I like the smell of. Like this is an all-purpose seasoning and rub, Cooper's Original. And I'll kind of smell it and see if that smells like it would be a good thing to start with, a good base. And that one does smell good. I've got this Bub's Rub here too, and I like this one. I've used it before. It's got a little more uh, of a smell of uh, chili powder, so that might be good on the on the pork. The um, one that I like for chicken, it's really just a seasoning, and I'll add stuff to it. It's called Sazonador Total. Hmm. It's made by Goya, and it, it's a it's got some lime flavoring in, in it, and it really it works great on poultry and fish. So I like that one. Yeah, that one. That one we're going to use, and I'm just going to dump, dump some in one of these bowls, and what I think will be enough to season all those thighs. So I'll put that in there, and then I'll add. Probably a little of this minced onion, not a lot, but some, just for some onion flavor. And then, don't want that. Probably just a little pepper. Just kind of have to look and decide if you've got enough or not. This is roasted garlic and herb. Now, I haven't. I haven't even opened this one, so I don't know what it smells like, but it sounds good. Yeah, I think that'll work too, so I'm going to put some of that in there. Might as well as throw everything in there. Not a whole lot. Yeah, yeah, I, I throw a good bit of stuff in there. And then I just kind of mix it around with my fingers. Usually, usually I'll use a spoon, but I'm using my fingers today. They're clean. All right, then I'll take this over and I'll just shake it over all the chicken. And this is the fun part. If you get it all kind of scattered around, then you got to get dirty. You got to get this stuff and rub it all over. That's where your hands come in handy. So you just kind of smear it around. So you get it evenly distributed all over all the pieces of chicken. And I, you notice I started with the, the skin side down, so most of the seasoning is going on the meat because I usually don't eat the skin myself, but it, you know, it does season it good. Mm -hmm. So that way, you got all of that over there. Now those are ready to actually go on the grill. Two fresh limes, what I'm gonna do with those Let's go ahead and just half them. And then this is going to be squeezed over the chicken as well to uh, add some citrus flavor to it. So I'll squeeze these real good. And, we'll, and it's, it also helps the, the spices spread out and soak in. And, all that stuff. So that's about half, and I'm gonna get one of these other halves and put on the rest. Oops, squirted you. Mm, that's okay. The lime juice. You never know where that's gonna go. Okay, so I used a, a lime and a half on that, so. A lime and a half. A lime and a half. Okay. okay. The next thing is the rub for the, the ribs. 
And I do the same thing for them as I would, as I did for the chicken, except I'm gonna use this Bub's Rub as a base. So I'll put probably maybe three tablespoons, three or so tablespoons full in there. I'm gonna add a little bit of this Cooper's because it smells a little different. I think it'll add some additional flavor. Probably about a teaspoon or so. And then I'm gonna go over here. I'll, again, I'd like to add some onion for some onion flavor. I'll put a little more in that one. Um, I sometimes put uh, garlic in there, but I don't have any today. But I'm gonna add a little bit more chili powder. So that's probably a tablespoon or a teaspoon maybe. Some black pepper. Probably make me sneeze in a minute. <laughs> okay. I like pepper. Okay. Then I don't think you can get really on pork. Sometimes you need a little extra salt, so I'm gonna put garlic salt in. And that's probably a half of a half a teaspoon of garlic salt. Okay, then I'm just gonna stir it up. If there's any lumps or anything, I'll mash them up. So now I've got about a half a cup of, of the uh, rub. And I'll just take that and just use my hands and spread it around. And put about half on this side. Make sure I get, get it down in all that meat. There's usually some places that, that you need you can open up and put it in. Okay, and then I'll flip this whole thing over and put the other half on this side. And rub it on there. That's why they call it a rub. <laughs> okay, you gotta rub it in. <laughs> you gotta there. rub it in. Yeah. Yummy pork ribs. I had some of those the other day. But, uh, okay. We're making them. Yeah, today we're making them. Mm hmm. Now we're going to make the sauce. Mm hmm. Some barbecue sauce. So, what I do first, I'll get this. This is going to be our pan we're going to use. Okay. And we'll turn this burner up to probably around eight. Let it get hot. We'll put about a half a stick of butter in there. Let it melt. And I always use some ketchup. Get the brown sugar. I forgot I, I use brown sugar, which I forgot to get out. But we'll get that out. And uh, I use a little bit of uh, Louisiana hot sauce. Some honey, a little bit of honey, not a whole lot. And some apple cider vinegar for that tangy little tang to it. And then I've got this KC Masterpi Masterpiece Marinade that has a really good smell and I'll add a little bit of it for just a little extra flavor. So that'll pretty much make our barbecue sauce. And this takes a few minutes to combine it all. Give it a spoon. Butter and brown sugar. Mm -hmm. Doesn't get much better than that. Mm -hmm. I could eat that right out of the pan. Let it melt down. Ooh, good stuff. All right, then we're gonna just kind of let it, let it do its thing. Cooking's fun. Mm -hmm. Especially when it's barbecue. Mm. Oh yeah, you can't go wrong. No. I mean, you really can't mess barbecue up. And so what's the, do you call it cooking barbecue or barbecuing? Barbecuing. 
But you're cooking the meat. Yeah, you're cooking just, the meat. Just call barbecue when you're done. The barbecue and the meat. Yeah. All right, get that all going. Starting to get on this side Starting a little better. Starting to sizzle a little, and we'll turn it down just a little so it doesn't burn. And I'll we'll add a little bit of honey, probably a couple tablespoons. That ought to do it right there. Right. And the ketchup is kind of a main ingredient, so we only need a pretty good amount of it. Smells good. Turn that back down some more. Ooh, you smell it? Mm hmm, it smells good. Butter, brown sugar, honey, and ketchup so far. Sauce? Louisiana hot sauce. Louisiana hot sauce. Yeah, I don't put a whole lot because I know people don't like it too hot. Alright, then I'm going to add a little bit of this classic steakhouse marinade to it. I've never used this before in barbecue sauce, but it smells like it'd be really good. So I'm going to try about that much just for some flavoring. That stirred up real good. I'm gonna have to turn it back up just a little. Ooh, yeah, that's starting to smell like some good stuff right there. Mm -hmm. it smells really good. One thing I'll add over from over here it's is a good color now too. Yeah, it's starting to get that color. Is some uh, minced onion flakes, just a little bit for to let get that little bit of flavor out of, and they'll they'll be soft, and you won't even know they're there when they get all uh, blended in. And the last thing is the vinegar. I don't put too much in because you can make it too strong. Probably about a tablespoon or two and that much. Probably right there. It's just about right. And I'll just stir that in. This is more like um, St. Louis or, or uh, oh, you can't think of the name of the town that's so famous for barbecue that's St. Louis, Memphis. A lot of the sauces that they make in Texas don't have the, the vinegar in them. But the vinegar to me just adds something to it that it's a little bit of bite that just really is nice. So now that we got this kind of all incorporated, uh, it's time to taste it. Okay. See if it's any good. You're not gonna give any arguments for me on that. All right. Be good. Well, that is good. Ooh, yeah. That's perfect. You want to taste? Yes. Barbecue sauce tasting. Yep. Let me try that. It's not hot. Mmm. That's really good. That's mm. some good sauce. Let's look over here. Okay, we've got, we've got the grill ready to light. We've got charcoal down at one end of the grill. I'm only gonna light one end of this pile of charcoal. So this will be going, get going good, and then I'll take the lighter thing out and it will eventually burn itself all the way across. In the meantime, I'll add the wood on top and uh, that'll give us a long-term smoke uh, so we can put our meat on and it'll 
it'll get the temperature up in there, but it won't won't burn the meat. Won't get it too dry. What kind of wood? This is apple wood. I'm using apple wood. I've got uh, pecan, and I've got some hickory, uh, and I've got some uh, post oak. But I think the apple wood gives pork a really good flavor, and chicken. So we're going to do pork and chicken. That's about that. I'm going to plug this thing in so we can get this lit. It's ready to plug in. And it will light itself, and uh, we're good to go. And in a few minutes, it gets red hot and it'll start. It'll so light. once this gets hot, it'll light the charcoal. Mm -hmm. And then you unplug it once it's going and take it out and let it cool off and the charcoal is gone. We're gonna bring the meat out here. Got my little side table set up, so we're ready to go there. Now you can look at this fire and see how it's going. That starter really does work good. There we go. Then you unplug it and carefully just take it out of the mix there. And then what I do with it, <laughs> I stick it over here and hang it on that metal cleat so it won't catch anything on fire. Uh, that's probably smart. Until it cools down. So that's all going pretty good now. Yeah. And then that's the special feature of that grill is you can lower it down now. I'm gonna lower right. this down and I'm going to uh, I'm not going to need this this grill. Move this over for a second, and I'm going to get this wood. Put a couple pieces. Put it all the way up on top. So now I've got the fire it started at this end, and it's going to burn its way all the way over. And I won't put the meat over the fire. I'll put it down here, so it will smoke basically. Right, cook slower that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to shut this damper down quite a bit, pretty much all the way. And then I'm going to take this uh, chicken first. I'm going to put it on this upper rack up here. Let it get started up there. Take this big end, this big thick end, and put it down towards the fire because that part will be hotter. Okay, it'll put take, the big end towards the it'll fire. It'll take a little more yeah. cooking to get that cooked good. And then, since my hands are dirty, I'll just close this up. And That's we'll. A uh, professional char griller. We're going to watch the thermometer, and when it gets up to 250, I'll shut the damper down all the way and uh, you can see the smoke now coming out of the stack and we've got that set at about half open or half closed whatever you want to call it so this is a char griller mm -hmm. it's it's new i just got it this week and um, i really like it because it's a little bigger than my old one and i love that you can get to the fire if i want to add more wood or charcoal i can open this door and add it in uh, and I can lower the fire down to the bottom or I can raise it right up under the meat if I want to cook something really fast like to sear some steaks or something works great temperature's already going up it's getting like it's 125 in there now it won't take it long to get up to 250 and then I'll shut that down shut the dampers down and try to maintain it at 250 and we'll just let it cook all the rest of the time till lunchtime. Awesome. Is that 200? Yep, you're right. Yep, almost there. So, 
And the secret is not to look at it while it's cooking. Exactly. You don't want to. You don't want to look at it all the time. Let the heat out. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So we're not going to look at the barbecue we're making just yet. Right. Here's the beans. Just start shaking. Yeah. No, that ain't enough. A little bit more. You said there are chuck wagon beans. Oh, chuck wagon beans. Smell beans. everything. Mm. Smells, smells like it'll blend together. <clears throat> Mall, From the Colony Mall in Nacogdoches. I hadn't been there in forever, but at least you got the book while it was there. A collection of Texas recipes. So that's where the chuck wagon bean recipe came from? Yep. Yeah. yeah, the people watching this video probably can't get this book, but that's okay. Maybe on Amazon. Maybe. It's still around. When was that published? Oh gosh, I, I'm not really sure. Should save or something. Let's see. Missing page. 1984. That's a vintage cookbook. That's the recipe for the chuck wagon beans that we're making. We're also going to be having potatoes with creamy dill sauce. Mmm. You're cooking up some taters over here. Yeah, I said taters. We're in Texas. I can do that. Taters. Taters. Not mashed taters, just taters. Just plain old taters. Well, they're not going to be plain old taters. They're taters with creamy dill sauce. Right. So those taters are cooking. And that's the butter for the dill sauce. Yep. Flour and salt and dill. It says butter, butter, flour, salt, and dill. Yep. And now. Then you got that I fancy. Is that a fancy spatula? It's a fancy spatula. Well, it's just more like a whisk. And now you've got half and half. Yep. Camera. So that's Come making here. some really good cream sauce then for the taters. Come They're over here cooking. Cream sauce. So yep. here's the creamy dill sauce for the potatoes. It's thickened up quite a bit. Looks good. I hope it's good. Should be. And the potatoes are over here. Potatoes are almost done. Potatoes with creamy dill sauce. Checking the barbecue again. It smells really good. The temperature is right around 250 now. We're sitting here waiting for a really long time for barbecue to cook. So I thought I'd come over and steal her Reese's. No. 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 Ow! You bit me! <laughs> I love you. Success! The Sportula. Houston, Texans. But we're not cooking with propane today. Sorry, Hank Hill. Not needing any propane or propane accessories. Alrighty. Let's see what we got. Put our bread on there. French bread. To warm it up. There's all the lovely barbecue. Alright, how long we got? Another 20 minutes, maybe? Yeah, probably. Here's some chicken. This is looking really good. Got ribs and sausage links. We threw those on there after the fact because they were already cooked just to heat them up. That's the box, I can hold it. Those are the finished potatoes with dill cream sauce. Cream sauce with dill, whatever it is. Yum. And we've got ribs. We've got all this barbecue. We still got some on the grill staying warm. I'm about to get myself a plate of this. 
Chicken. Chicken. Barbecue chicken thighs. And ribs. We got more of that. It's all outside, but it's still on the grill. Staying warm. Yum. Y'all like barbecue? Y'all like no, barbecue? You love barbecue. Yes. Barbecue's good. So you, I want, if you don't eat, I want you there's to not going to be any left. Well, I have to make a video, 4th of July family barbecue video. But yeah, I'm about to stop making videos. We don't want to hear you complain in a little I know, bit. Y'all are making me hungry, so I'm going to stop shooting video for a little while, mm -hmm. and I'm going to eat. Happy 4th of July barbecue, everybody. Woohoo! Happy, Happy 4th. 4th. That barbecue was so good. Some of us are having a barbecue nap. Well, thanks so much for watching this video about our 4th of July family barbecue. We hope you enjoyed it. I want to say thanks to all of you for watching. Thanks to all the barbecue restaurants and food trucks that we've been to lately. Y'all all have a really good barbecue. We're gonna keep bringing you videos on barbecue, food trucks, restaurants, making barbecue, all things barbecue here on Adventures in Barbecue. So please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Tell your friends that like barbecue to subscribe to our channel. We're gonna keep bringing you all different kinds of adventures in barbecue. Thanks again for watching.